free to share your screen, introduce yourself and uh, talk about your topic. Thanks. Thank you very much, Rowan. Uh, and thanks for everyone for your patience with um, technical difficulties. It's always a bit frustrating and it, it's nice that everyone kind of stayed on board um, and we all got through that as one. So thanks very much for having me. Uh, I'm Siobhan McCafferty. I'm a project manager for the ARDC. Um, and I am, amongst other things, uh, a, a wrangler of PIDs and RAID in particular. Um, so I'm here to present a little bit about our recent um, integrations with ARDC uh, with RAID and, and talk about some of the, the problems and some of the, uh, the benefits that that threw up. So I'm just going to share my screen now figure out. How's that? Everyone can see it? Yes. Okay. Fabulous. Cool. So practicing what we preach with RAID integration at the ARDC. I think a lot of people have heard me talk about RAID, but I'm going to recap um, and give you a, a little bit of an update. So RAID is a project ID. Uh, and why a project ID? Uh, because unlike some other IDs, which are not persistent, um, projects uh, are a stable entity. Um, researchers move, institutions change, but projects are eternal, as I like to say. Um, not that they go on forever, but a project is a very stable entity. Uh, it also deals with the cultural issue within academia, and that's of the gatekeeper. Uh, it reflects collaborative practices. People work on projects together. Um, it has a, a lower administrative burden than trying to wrangle lots of people. It improves reporting for infrastructure and it helps provide clear lines of provenance. Uh, it fits in with the idea of a continuum model for research data, that data as attached to a project will be used by a few different uh, entities within the, the research um, workflow or ecosystem. It'll be used in different ways uh, and will have different outputs. And it deals again with that researcher centered model, which creates a silo. So where you have a researcher acting as a gatekeeper for data, in particular, data doesn't tend to go very far. But when you have it attached to a project, you've got a different kettle of fish. So we took the research uh, activity apart uh, and looked at it in terms of entities and actions. Um, what, who's in there? What are they doing? We've got funders, we've got institutions, we've got infrastructures publishers, uh, what are they doing? They're using, they're funding, they're creating, they're collaborating. How can we express this um, within uh, linked up metadata? So we can do it by putting the project at the center and using a, what I like to call the rhizomic model because I don't get to use the word rhizome enough. Um, and when we put the project at the center uh, and allow those connections to be expressed, um, we get a much better picture of what's going on in research and, and a better way to trace it. So entities are recorded in metadata, research actions are reflected in project timelines, and related PIDs can be recorded in the metadata. So we're, sorry, go back on, um, where RAID is a PID for project uh, projects. It's a handle, um, very simply, uh, and it has attached to it uh, an envelope that collects other bits of metadata about the project's relationships and the entities it's related to. Um, and those are, hopefully, uh, PIDs. They're designed to be PIDs. And they're designed to be um, best practice PIDs. So we, we hope that this is um, supporting uh, the development of standards and best practices across um, PID land and research. So the RAID manifest acting as an envelope can collect um, all the identifiers that happen during the course of the activity and provide a, a timeline or a bit of an audit trail and show who did what, when, with who, how they did it and what were the results. 
if you wanted to visualize that, you could think of it as being like a folder or an envelope at the top. We've got the handle. Um, we see it was minted by the ARDC on the 1st of the 1st, 2020. Um, we can see there's a person associated with it. It's an orchid. We can see there's a DOI. This is an output from a project. We can see there's a raw, so it tells us that there's an institution. Uh, and we see the dates here that tell us that that's ongoing relationship, same as the person who's attached to it. And there's a range, so there's maybe a sub-project. So this is a really simple and quite idealized view of what it can be like, but it gives you an idea of what the, the design behind the rate is and how it can work. Um, also to fill you in a bit more, that there is a roadmap for development here. Uh, and we have a, a 2021 and beyond plan and with a goal to internationalize and grow RAID. There's a RAID expansion project uh, with More Brains Cooperative, um, who are fabulous, and that's due to finish up in March 2021. We're also looking to complete the RAID ISO standard certification um, May, hopefully, possibly a little bit longer. These things sometimes do, um, but we're actually well on track for that. And we want to further develop RAID's technical architecture and features. There's some things in there we'd really like to add, and that's come uh, a lot from feedback from integrations, which we'll go into a little bit more. And we want to work with the global community to develop a governance framework that can underpin board usage and long-term sustainability. Now, road integration, proof in the pudding. There's a picture here of a wombat because a uh, wombat is a clone I could find to a pudding. That was a marsupial and platypuses had been taken or platypi. Platypods had been taken. So uh, beginning with the wombat. What were the drivers for our adoption? Well, first of all, leading by example, we are the Australian Research Data Commons. We need to lead by example. Culture change must come from above and below, and leaders in the PID space must be seen to use PIDs. Therefore, we should probably do a RAID integration. Second of the drivers, and this was, um, this was really interesting, the ARDC FAIR policy includes the use of PIDs where possible for AADC data and materials, and also for data and materials that come out of uh, projects that are part of our co-investment. So this would apply to workflows uh, for AADC materials, for training videos, for recorded um, workshops, Zenodo for storage, uh, so we have DOIs, um, orchid collection for contributors. All of these things uh, coming out of the, our FAIR policy kind of came to the fore as things that we, we really need to concentrate on uh, and need to be more proactive about. And these are also metadata for our project partners and for project data, as I mentioned. So that entailed uh, the development of a lot of educational material and a lot of conversation around um, raising the profile of PIDs within research, who it's appropriate to be doing that work. Um, trying not to overburden our researchers, but really to work on developing infrastructure that is um, joined up uh, and can work in a really uh, seamless plumbing kind of way. And one of the last drivers would be co-investment tracking. So we manage millions of dollars worth of co-funding. Um, so we need to be able to trace that. We need to be able to see what the outputs are, um, your return on investment, uh, all those nice acronym, acronyms. Um, so RAID can collect the grant ID data outputs and collaborators for a co-funded project. So it seems like a, a smart idea to do that integration. So I'm going to look at two integrations that we uh, that we worked on at the ARDC. And they're, they're quite different. The first one is with the Nectar allocation platform. So the ARDC's Nectar Research Cloud is a federated research cloud. Uh, it provides countrywide research community with fast intera uh, interactive self-service access to computing infrastructure, software and data. Uh, it's very powerful. And access to it is a manual process where access is granted to an individual. So we really wanted to look at upgrading the, the experience of the users uh, and making it again more seamless and being able to do some of that heavy lifting in the background from that manual process uh, in an automated way using PIDs. So the drivers were RAID and a Federated ID Management for Research or FIM4R as a means to allocate access to project groups 
and that was by leveraging orchids. If we can collect the orchids for the people who are trying to access the cloud and use those in the background to provide access to storage that they are appropriately uh, attached to, use of other platforms, uh, grant IDs, for example, and uh, internal projects, that would be really, really useful. So it would help us with collecting data outputs and grant IDs, and also for measuring infrastructure use, uh, infrastructure and uh, instruments, which is another discussion, but what's, what's infrastructure and what's, what's an instrument. So this was a, a project that we started looking at, um, and immediately there were some issues, and I think these issues are really relevant uh, on, a, on a global scale. Um, so the, the big issue for us was, um, despite there being a high uptake of ORCID through universities and research organisations, not all of those organisations were supplying ORCIDs in their EduPerson token. So you can sign in with your single sign-on, you can uh, you know, access things, that's all very nice, but if your institution is not releasing your ORCID uh, along with that sign-in, then nobody can connect it and we can't collect it and we can't use it. So we hit this very early on in the process. Uh, the, the issue was not one of uh, technical capacity. We were able to do this, um, but the fact that we needed to really engage with community to increase the, uh, the releasing of, of this attribute so that we could use it. So that project is contingent upon the further release of attributes uh, of ORCID by institutions. Um, it's a, an idea that's, that's great in itself, uh, but it's very difficult to do um, without all, I think it's 42 institutions releasing those. Um, and we didn't really think this would be an issue, but it turns out that in the world of integrations, it's not always your capacity that's a problem, it's sometimes um, other external issues. So the second uh, of the integrations oops, that I wanted to talk about is the AIDC National Data Assets Projects. So we had six programs and hundreds and hundreds of partner organisations. Um, and we wanted to make sure that we were simultaneously supporting that those partners uh, while also improving fair data practices across the sector while also uh, complying to our own internal standards that we we're trying to raise. So our, our fair planning, our uh, data transparency, um, really making sure that we, we walk the talk. Um, so we decided to integrate with uh, Salesforce, which is our uh, internal um, project management and uh, CRM service, um, so that it would be able to uh, have pick up of PIDs, uh, RAIDs, ORCIDs, and RAWs. So we had some issues. Um, the first issue was that Salesforce integration. Um, the ideal of machine to machine uh, isn't always realizable. Sometimes we need to realize that um, one step is manual uh, on the way to increasing uh, integrations. Uh, and it was something that we'd seen in external partners, and it was really interesting to be on the internal um, side of this as well with a, a RAID integration that we couldn't just um, attach it up to the API uh, and let it go. We had to figure out a way for it to talk to our internal systems and our internal platforms. Um, and at the moment, there isn't a way to do that. So we're doing it manually. So we had to figure out a manual minting workflow for our AADC staff. Um, and that brought to head the idea of improving our um, our UI, making sure that we had a more usable product um, for people who weren't coming in from a technical side. Um, so that was actually a, a really useful um, issue to, to deal with. And the other issue I would say would be educating project partners. Um, when we create a RAID, the RAID is attached to the, the project, it has a grant ID, and then the ownership of that RAID is passed over to the partner in the project. So they are then responsible, like a DOI, for updating the details on that. Um, so we had to educate them about what a RAID is, how it works, why it's useful for them, and how it related to other PIDs that they may be aware of. So that education uh, process is, of course, ongoing, and material around it is, is ongoing. 
So that pilot has been complete uh, and it's, it's now being rolled out and we're looking at ways to improve this. So it was a real learning curve watching uh, the issues that we've seen in other integrations happen within our own organisation um, and how we can better help people with their integrations as well as improve our, our integration as well. So the takeaways, uh, there's lots of takeaways, but I, I picked out a few. Um, one was to work with ARDC services and users to reflect needs and minimise pain points. Um, in the same way, uh, I don't want to have to do things manually. No one else should have to do things manually. So if we can develop ways for um, people within ARDC to um, you know, semi-automate things through workflows, that, that's really important. We also need to work with infrastructure and service providers to improve connections with services. So uh, federated ID management, also uh, use of other platforms, um, access to national services uh, and their, uh, their data storage. It, these things are really important for that connectivity. Um, my big soapbox for the moment, we need to agitate for Federated ID management subscribers to release edge person tokens with ORCIDs. Um, ORCIDs have had a massive uptake. Most, I'm going to say most, I hope most researchers have them. Um, I would love to leverage them. I want to make sure people can access cloud services, store things, um, be able to use instrumentation online um, by leveraging their ORCID. So we really need institutions to release those. Um, we also need to encourage PID use across the sector. Um, for example, we had a few of our, our co-investment partners who didn't have uh, some kind of international standard identify for themselves. So we contacted RAW and asked them to, um, to create a RAW for them so that we had a, a standard ID that we could use. Um, and that standardization is something that's necessary across the sector. So those are the main takeaways, and those have really been put into that expansion project as well um, as part of our road, roadmap for 2021. Um, and these two examples uh, are just two of kind of many things that have happened during our um, maybe past six months, really looking at uh, improving how we do PIDs uh, and how we lead by example. Um, and I, I wonder if there's anyone else here who has had uh, experience doing this um, or who wants to ask some questions. Um, saying that, I've got a big scary spider. It's not very scary. He's got kind of cute cartoony fangs. Um, so you can ask me or the spider any questions you like. Um, and you can also contact me anytime you'd like to ask me questions about RAID or, or related things. Well, thanks. thanks very much, Siobhan. And we do have some time for questions at the moment. I haven't seen any questions for Siobhan coming to the chat. So would anyone like to pose a question or make comment about Siobhan's presentation? And while that's happening, are there any other questions that you might have, Siobhan, for uh, those participating today? Yeah, I'm interested to know barriers to usage um, for PIDs, uh, not just RAID, um, and uh, how you deal with those. Uh, and I know in some cases it's just lack of capacity, um, particularly in a, in a COVID world. We don't have the time or the people to do these integrations um, or uh, there's maybe less appetite. Yeah, I'm really interested in these and they, they will be reflected in um, the, the future planning as well for, for RAID and other PIDs that we're involved in. And during your time involved with uh, persistent identifiers, Siobhan, have you noticed attitudes changing for this critical piece mm. of infrastructure? Has it become less challenging to get the word out, to see these uh, identifiers implemented, maintained, resourced, understood uh, mm. for their importance? Uh, I think there's there's definitely an increase in understanding of their importance uh, and, and often how they work. I think, um, as I said, ORCID 
was a, a, a massive kind of avant-garde for us. Uh, they they went to the front. The, there was a lot of uptake. People really understood why they were useful. And it's great to be able to leverage that understanding to explain other kids. Um, I think there is also maybe a, a little bit of um, people are a bit tired as well in the PID sector. There's a, a lot of different PIDs. And I know there are arguments about um, streamlining uh, or, you know, arguments against it. And the, the Cambrian talk earlier today where we had the, the explosion of PIDs and, and how useful it is. So um, there's still a lot of conversation going on there, but that conversation seems to be less about are these a useful thing and about how can we how can we use these useful things? How how useful is this useful thing? And do do you do you think you have the stories, the resources, the pictures um, available to try and make that case and to bring people along? I mean, clearly, as a new attendee at uh, Peter Palooza, I can see there's just tremendous uh, commitment and interest. Um, but I suppose that it can often be challenging to mm. have a story pitched to a particular user uh, you know, in a way that's going to make sense to them. Are, are, there, yeah. are there those sorts of resources available for people coming into this area to help mm. um, develop their understanding and also to promote to uh, uh, people in their own organisations? Yeah, I think things like PIDGRAPH are incredibly important here because we need to be able to visualise these things. Like they are, they are a little bit esoteric, um, I think. Uh, so it's it's very well to explain how something works or even to show diagrams, but something like the PID graph gives you a really clear picture of connectivity and usage and utility. Um, and I think those stories, um, like the, the COVID story that we heard earlier today, I think those are really important for getting the story out about how these things are actually really useful. Um, and they're not just a, a nice bit of academia or... Um, fancy tech, like they're, they're really useful. Okay, well, we still have a few minutes left. Um, so if anyone has a question or a comment for Siobhan, you're welcome to pop that into the chat. Are there any other comments or issues you'd like to raise at this point, Siobhan? Uh, culture change is hard. Culture change is slow, uh, and I, I think we do a great job slowly moving ahead, changing the culture of research um, kind of one story at a time. And I really want to give um, give kudos to everyone working in this area for very slowly um, creating the, this culture change. Um, I think early career researchers, when I engage with them now, have really got their head around stuff because this culture is changing. Uh, and they, they want to engage with the, the technology and with with PIDs, um, they see them as useful tools. So, yeah, I think we're doing great work and sometimes it's easy to get a little bit disheartened because things don't move so quickly. I know I do sometimes. Um, but then I look at the wider picture and I just think, oh, we've done amazing stuff, They're really amazing things. Well, look, thanks. Thanks very much. Thanks again for your presentation today.